What is up, Pro Guides family, and welcome back to another Valorant video. Today, we're going to be ranking each gun from best to worst in their respective categories. This list is based on how each weapon feels, how they interact with the agents, and how well priced they are. And Riot has suggested that they will balance the game a couple times every month, just like League of Legends, so the meta will constantly be evolving and changing. So make sure to stick around, hit that sub button, so you guys stay updated in Valorant. Just like in League of Legends, we work with the best pros in the game, and for Valorant, it is no different. We've compiled the best CSGO players to make this list for you guys, so rest assured that this is the best information you can get right now. And as always, for our question of the day, what gun do you guys love the most in Valorant? This doesn't have to be which gun is the most OP, because we're going to tell you in this video. Tell me which one resonates well with you. Okay, let's start off with the pistols. If you've ever played CSGO before, you know that the pistol round is one of, if not the most impactful rounds in the entire game. And in Valorant, it's no different. From the impact on the economy to the demoralizing feeling after losing one, the pistol round is crucial for any hope of victory. The main difference in the pistol rounds in Valorant is that you have the option of buying much more because of the decreased cost of the light armor. For the pistol round, if you are a support-oriented agent like Sage or Brimstone, we recommend keeping the classic pistol and buying abilities and or light armor. If you're an entry agent like Jet or Phoenix, buy the Ghost if you like that one-tap potential or buy the Frenzy if you like to run and gun. Keep in mind that if you buy the Frenzy, you can afford light armor as well. Outside the pistol round, we recommend buying the Sheriff for most scenarios, in which case you do not have enough credits to buy a rifle, but still have enough to get some nice firepower. And if your bank is really struggling, then we suggest picking up the Frenzy for some quantity over quality in the bullet department with the fast rate of fire on the Frenzy pistol, so you will be able to mow down enemies before they even realize it. Now onto the Shorty. The Shorty is a very unique pistol. It only costs $200, making it the cheapest gun in the game. Remember though, the gun comes with only two rounds in the magazine before it needs to be reloaded. We also recommend only buying this pistol in certain situations if you are planning to shoot within a very short range. Otherwise, we recommend splurging a little more and going for the higher ranked Frenzy. Just to recap, the pistols we recommend buying are the Sheriff for Eco Rounds and the Ghost or Frenzy if you want an upgraded pistol on the first round of each half. So with the pistols, we didn't rank them in a specific order. It's very situational for the pistols, but going forward, we're going to try and rank these guns for you. So now let's go into SMGs and shotguns. For every Eco Round, there is an anti-Eco Round, in which case you'll need to buy an SMG or shotgun. To start off our list, we look at the best of these two classes with the Spectre, which is a mix of lethal bullets with a high rate of fire. This SMG has the potential to run over opponents, beaming them down one by one. And guess what? It even has the potential to kill long range with its ADS, which only decreases its fire rate slightly, but increases your view inside the scope by 25%. The second highest rated gun we recommend picking up is the Stinger. This beast of a gun has the fastest fire rate in the entire game and can shoot a devastating 18 bullets per second, making the gun capable of emptying its 20 round clip in just over a second. The gun also has an ADS mode, which shoots three bullet bursts. This gun has no counterplay if used correctly and should be used to surprise the opponents with its speed and versatility. And for only a thousand credits, you can't go wrong with buying this gun. The first shotgun that appears on this list is the Judge. Just by the name, you know this gun packs a punch and serves justice to whoever crosses its path. But for 1500, it must take a backseat to both the Spectre and the Stinger for several reasons. The first reason is obvious, it's the price. For 1500, you can buy a Stinger and 500 worth of abilities or light armor, which could be the turning point in the round. Or you could spend the 150 bucks more for the Spectre and have a much better range at almost four times the fire rate. The second reason is consistency. With any shotgun, the damage is split across all the pellets fired at once, and sometimes luck is not on your side, and you find that out of the 12 pellets you fired right at his head, only three hit, leaving you with a non-lethal blow from most ranges and armor types. The third and final reason you should pick the Spectre or Stinger over the Judge are the use cases. On either the attacking side or the defending side, shotguns are only good at close range. And when you're on the attacking side, you have to push into them, making it easy for the defenders to be playing far back once they see you are playing such a close-ranged weapon. 
On the flip side, the judge is good when holding a close angle and waiting for the attackers to walk right in. But if the spike goes down on the other bomb site, you can kiss your chances of that round goodbye. The final light gun we have is the Bucky. The Bucky is very inexpensive at just $900 and shoots 15 pellets per shot. The Bucky is the cheapest primary weapon in the game and deserves that title. It holds the second lowest rate of fire in the game, only being beaten by the Operator. Just like CSGO's Nova shotgun, the Bucky is something that is going to be overshadowed by better weapons for better prices. All right, that's it for the light weapons. Now let's head into the rifles. The main attraction for CSGO and Valorant is no doubt the rifles. They are the cool kids, they are the hot Becky in senior year. The quick and lethal gunplay that these weapons can produce is what we live for and what we strive for in this game. The potential to turn a corner and instantly kill someone with a single well-placed bullet to the head is what sets these two games apart from their competition. The first and best rifle on our list is hands down the Vandal. This rifle is similar to an AK-47 as possible and feels great to play. The Vandal from any range is a one-shot to the head, just as the AK is in CSGO. After a slight learning curve of the spray, the Vandal is sure to be a top pick in competitive Valorant. The main rival of the Vandal and second on our list is the Phantom. Having the same price as the Vandal and available to purchase on either the attacking or defending team, these two guns are sure to be hotly debated on which is better than the other. What sets the Vandal apart from the Phantom is that the Phantom will not one-shot to the head if the opponent has a heavy shield and is more than 15 meters away, which is a fairly short distance. To make up for that fact, the Phantom has a faster rate of fire in both ADS and regular modes, plus has 5 more bullets per magazine and 20 more bullets total for any smoke or wall spam you might want to do. On top of this, the Phantom has a much easier spray pattern and is fairly easy to control off the start. The final difference between these two guns is that the Phantom has a suppressor on the front of it and works similarly to the M4A1S in CSGO, where it is still possible to hear where the bullets are coming from, just a little harder. The last two rifles in Valorant are the Bulldog and the Guardian, and on our list we have to put the Bulldog beating out the Guardian for the better overall gun. While the Bulldog may not one-shot to the head as the Guardian does, it still packs quite the punch and for 2100, it has a lot more use cases than the Guardian does. The 2700 price tag is puzzling because for just $200 more, you could get a Vandal that comes in the same lethal headshot capabilities that the Guardian has, but can be used in the full auto mode while the Guardian is only semi-automatic. The only upside to the Guardian is the 50% zoom mode instead of the normal 25%. After ripping on the Guardian, it might just seem like we put the Bulldog above it because we think the Guardian is bad, but that's not entirely the case. The Bulldog might not one-shot to the head if the opponent has armor, but with basically the same rate of fire as the Vandal and having an ADS mode that gives you three bullet bursts that even in long range seems to be pretty precise, is a solid pickup in the same way you would pick up a FAMAS or Galil in CSGO. Alright guys, that's it for the rifles. Now let's head into the snipers and the heavies. Our number one rank for this category has to be the Operator. Being almost a 1-1 copy from Counter-Strike, the Operator is the Op Reborn. Featuring the same damage from Counter-Strike, the Operator can one-shot anyone no matter the armor or distance from the waist up. This, alongside Riot's new system of countering Peeker's advantage, makes it a devastating weapon in any situation. Just make sure when you invest the 4500, you stand perfectly still while shooting, because unlike in Counter-Strike, where you can walk and crouch walk while scoped in and be 100% accurate, you will need to be either standing or crouching still to shoot it accurately. Our number two gun for this category and the second sniper in the game is the Marshall. The Marshall might have a small price tag of only 1100, but don't let that fool you, it has quite the power. The Marshall most closely resembles the Scout from Counter-Strike, but has a few differences that make it even more viable in Valorant. While the Marshall is not accurate while jumping, and does not have the crazy movement speed like the Scout in Counter-Strike, it has a significantly cheaper price tag within the economy of both games. This allows the Marshall to be bought in most situations, and because it one-shots to the body if your opponent doesn't have armor, it can be extremely good in anti-eco rounds. It can also be used to steal a round win with its 250% zoom, and it also has a one-shot to the head, so it can be an easy way to catch your opponent sleeping with this gun. Moving on to the final two weapons on this list, it's going to be Ares and the Odin. Just like in Counter-Strike with the Negev and the M249, 
we expect these weapons to be very rarely seen. While the Ares is cheap and can go through walls pretty well, it seems to us that there are just so many more reliable guns to go with for the same price. I'm curious what Riot's going to do with these guns, because in CSGO, no one ever uses them. I think they're gonna have some trouble balancing these guns in this game as well. The same can be said for the Odin, which is a 3200 price tag. It will take a lot of convincing for us to buy the Odin instead of a Vandal or a Phantom. Hopefully the LMGs are more useful in Valorant than in CSGO, but we're not holding our breath. Alright guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please sub to the channel to get more content like this. And if you found this video helpful, please leave us a like. It really helps this video go get seen by a lot of people. Once again, it's been Kristoff with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck in your next few games.